Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of AWS reInvent 2022, live from the Venetian Expo in Las Vegas. We're happy to be back. This is the first full day of coverage. We were here last night. We've got three full days of coverage in addition to last night. And there's about 50,000 people here. This event is ready. People are ready to be back, which is so exciting. Lisa Martin here with Paul Gillen. Paul, it's great to be back in person. Great to be hosting with you. And likewise with you, Lisa. I think the first time we've hosted together. It is our it's first fantastic. time, exactly. <laughs> and we come here to the biggest event that theCUBE uh, ever does during the year. It's the Super it's, Bowl of theCUBE. It's, it's uh, elbow to elbow out there. It's, it's, it's uh, full tackle football. Totally. On, on, the, on the floor <laughs> of reInvent. And very exciting. Uh, this, you know, I've been to a lot of conferences going back 40 years, longer than I can remember, and going to tech conferences. This one, the, the intensity, the excitement around this is really unusual. Uh, people are jazzed, they're excited to be here, and that's great to see, particularly coming back from two years of isolation. Absolutely, the energy is so palpable. Even yesterday evening, afternoon when I was walking in, you just feel it with all the people here. You know, we talk to so many different companies on theCUBE, Paul. Every company these days has to be a data company. The most important thing about data is making sure that it's backed up, that it's protected, that it's secure, that it can be recovered if anything happens. So we're going to be having a great conversation next about data resiliency with one of our alumni. <laughs> and that would be uh, Rick Scott, Rick, uh, excuse me. Rick, Rick Scott. Rick Clark. Rick Clark. SVP Cloud Sales Veritas. Rick, welcome back to the program. Uh, thank, you, thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. You know, thank you so much. You're definitely very excited to myself and 40,000 of my closest cousins and friends yep. all in one place. Yep. What could possibly go wrong, right? Nothing, so, yeah. absolutely <laughs> nothing. So Rick, so Veritas has made some exciting announcements. Talk to us about some of the new things that you've unveiled. Yeah, we've been we've been incredibly busy, and uh, you know the journey that we've been on. One of the big announcements that we made about three or four weeks ago is the introduction, really, of a brand new uh, cloud-native data management platform that we call Veritas Alta. And uh, this is a journey that we've been on for the better part of seven years. Uh, we actually started it with our our Flex appliances. Uh, we continued, that was a containerization of our traditional net backup business and into a highly secured appliance that was loved by our customers. And uh, we continued that theme and that investment into what we call a scale out and scale up uh, form factor appliance as well, what we called flex scale. And then we continued on that in investment theme, uh, basically spending over a billion dollars over that seven year journey in our cloud native. And we call that basically the Veritas Alta platform with our cloud native platform. And I think if you really look at what that is, it truly is a data management platform and I emphasize the term cloud native. And so our traditional technologies around uh, data protection, uh, obviously application resiliency and uh, digital compliance or data compliance and governance, uh, we're the only, the first and only company in the world to provide really a cloud optimized, cloud native platform really that addresses that. So it's been fun, it's, it's been a fun, fun journey. Talk a little bit about the customer experience. I see over 85% of the Fortune 100 trust yeah. Veritas with their data management. That's yeah, a big number. It, yeah, it's, it is incredible actually, and it really comes back to the Veritas Alter platform. We sort of built that with, with four tenants in mind, all driving back to this very similar to AWS's customer obsession. Everything we do each and every day of our awakening moments as a Veritas employee is really surrounds the customer. So it starts with the customer experience on how do they find us, uh, to how do they procure our solutions through things like AWS Marketplace, and how do they deploy it. And the second thing is around really cost optimization. As we know, you know, to, to say that companies are going through a digital transformation and moving workloads to the cloud, I mean, I've got customers that literally were 20% in cloud a year ago and 80% a year later. We've never seen that kind of velocity. And so we've doubled down on this notion of cost optimization. You can only do that with these huge investments that I talked about. And so we're a very profitable company. We've been around, got a great uh, heritage of over 30 years. And we've really taken those investments in R&D to provide that sort of cl cloud native technology to ultimately make it elastic. And so everything from we'll spin up and spin down services to optimize the cloud bill for our customers. 
uh, but we'll also provide the greatest workload support. You know, obviously on-prem workloads are very different from cloud workloads. And it's almost like turning the clock back 20 years to see all of those new systems. There's no standard API like SNMP on the network. Uh, and so we have to talk to every single PaaS service, every single DB PaaS, and we capture that information and protect it. Uh, so it really has been a phenomenal journey. It's been great. You said this, uh, that, that Alta represents a shift from cloud, from flex scale to cloud native. What is the difference there? Uh, the, the main difference really is we took, you know, obviously our traditional bot, uh, product that you've known for many, many years, Net Backup. It's got, you know, tens of millions of lines of code in that. And we knew if we lifted and shifted it up into the cloud, into an IAES infrastructure, it's just not, it obviously would perform extremely well, but it wasn't cost optimized for our customer. It was too expensive to, to run. And so what we did is we rewrote with microservices and containerization Kubernetes, uh, huge parts of that particular product to really optimize it for the cloud. And not only have we done it for that technology, what we now call Alter Data Protection, but we've done it across our entire port portfolio. That was really the main change that we made as part of this particular transition. And what have you done to prepare customers for that shift? Is this going to be a, a drop-in, simple uh, upgrade for them? Absolutely, yeah. In fact, one of the things that we introduced is we, we invest all very heavily with regards to our on-prem solutions. We're certainly not abandoning. We're still innovating. There's a lot of data still on-prem that needs to move to the cloud. And so we have a unique advantage of all of the different workload supports that we provide um, on-prem, we continue that expansion into the cloud. So we, we created as part of the Veritas Alta Vision a technology we call an Alta View. So it's a single pane of glass uh, across both on-prem and cloud for our customers. And so now they can actually see all of their data protection, all their application availability, uh, single click all through that single unified interface, which is really game changing in the industry. It's game changing for customers too, because customers have what, generally six to seven different backup technologies in their environment that they're having to individually manage and provision. So the, the workforce productivity uh, improvements I can imagine are, are huge with Veritas. Yeah, you, you nailed it, right? You must have seen my script. <laughs> <laughs> but absolutely, I mean, I look at the analogy, if you think about airlines, what's one of the first things airlines do with efficiency? South, uh, Southwest Airlines was the best example. They standardized on the 737, right? And so all of their pilots, all of their mechanics, all know how to operate the 737. So we are doing the same thing with enterprise data protection. So whether you're on-prem, at the edge, or in the cloud, or even multi-cloud, uh, we can provide that single pane of glass. We've done it for our customers for 30 plus years. We'll continue to do it for another 30 something years. And so it's really the first time with Veritas Alta that, that we're, we're coming out with something that we've invested for so long and put, put such a huge investment on that can create those changes and that compelling solution for our customers. So as you can see, we're pretty pumped and excited about yes, it. Yes, I can. You use the term data management to describe Alta, and I want to ask about that term because I hear it a lot these days. You, data management used to be database. Now yeah. data management is being applied to all kinds of different functions across the spectrum. How do you define data management in Veritas's perspective? Yeah, there's a, we, we see it as really three main pillars across the environment. So one is protection, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about this notion of ransomware is probably the number one use case. So the ability to take the most complex and the biggest, most vast applications, SAP is an example, with hundreds of different moving parts to it and being able to protect that. The second is application resiliency. If, if you look at the cloud, um, there's this notion of, of responsibility, shared responsibility in the cloud. You've heard it, right? Yep. Every single one of the cloud service providers, certainly AWS, has up on their website, this is what we protect, here's the demarcation line, the line in the sand, and you, uh, uh, the customer, are responsible for that other level. And so, we've had a technology, you previously knew it as InfoScale, we now call it Alter Application Resiliency, and it can provide availability zone to availability zone, real-time replication, high availability of your mission critical applications, right? So not only do we do the traditional backups, but we can also provide application resiliency for mission critical. And then the third thing really from a data management standpoint is all around governance and compliance. 
Um, you know, a lot of our customers need to keep data for five, 10 years or forever. Uh, they're audited, there's regulations in different geographies around the world, uh, and, and those regulations require them to be able to really take control of their cloud, take control of their data. And so we have a whole portfolio of solutions under that data compliance, data governance. So back to your, your question, Paul, it's really the integration and the intersection of those three main pillars. We're not a one-trick pony. We've been at this for a long time, and they're not just new products that we invented a couple of months ago and brought to market. They're tried and tested with 80,000 customers and the most complex, really, solutions on the planet that we've been supporting. I've got to ask you, you know, talked about those three pillars, and you talked about the shared responsibility model, and think of that for, you mentioned AWS, Salesforce, Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, whatnot. Are you finding that most customers aren't aware of that and haven't been protecting <laughs> Those workloads that yeah. come to you and saying, hey guys, guess what? This is what, this is what they're responsible for. The data yes. is you. Yeah, it's our, it's our probably biggest challenge is, is one of awareness, you know, with the cloud. I mean, how many times have you spoken to someone and you just put it in the cloud, your applications, the, the cloud providers like AWS, they'll protect everything. Nothing will ever go down. And it's kind of like, if you, unless your house was ever broken into, you're probably not going to install that burglar alarm or that fire alarm, right? Hopefully that won't be an event that you guys have to suffer through. So, um, yeah, it's definitely, it wasn't until the last year or so that the cloud service providers really published jointly as to where is their responsibility, right? Um, so a great example is, is an attack vector for a lot of corporations is their SaaS applications. So, you know, whether it, it, it's uh, your traditional SaaS applications that, that is available, it's available on the web to their customers as a SaaS, and so it's certainly available to the bad actors. They're going to, where there's going to be a point they're going to try to get in. And so, no matter what your resiliency plan is, at the end of the day, you really need to protect it. And the protection isn't just, for example, with M365 having a snapshot or a recycle bin. That's just not good enough. And so we actually have some pretty compelling technology, what we call Ulta SaaS protection, which covers the, pretty much the, the gamut of the major SaaS technologies to protect those and make it available for our customers. So uh, yeah, certainly it's a big part of it is awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I understand the, the shared responsibility model. I, I realize there's a lot of confusion about that still, mm -hmm. but in the SaaS world, that's somewhat different. The responsibility of the SaaS provider for protecting data is somewhat different. How, how should, what should customers know about that? Um, I think, you know, the, the, uh, related to that, if, if you look at on-prem, you know, approximately 35 to 40% of on-prem enterprise data is protected. It's kind of been a long traditional problem, everyone's aware of it. You know, I remember going to a presentation from IBM 20-something years ago and someone held their push, hand up in the room about the disk drives and says, uh, Did, you need to back it up, and the IBM sales guy said, no, IBM disk drives never crash. Right? And so fast forward to oh here God. we are today, <laughs> things have changed. So we're going through almost the similar sort of changes in culture in the cloud. 8% of the data in the cloud is protected today, 8%. That's incredible. Meaning so that the, there is independent backup devoted so, to that data. In some cases, not at all. In, some, in many cases, the customer just assumes that it's in the cloud, therefore it's always available. I never have to worry about protecting it. Right, and so that's a big problem that we're obviously trying to trying to solve, and we do that all under the umbrella of ransomware. That's a huge theme, a huge investment that that Veritas does with regards to providing that resiliency for our customers. Ransomware is scary. It is becoming so prolific. The bad actors have access to technologies. Obviously, companies are fighting that. But now ransomware has evolved into no longer are we going to get hit? It's when. Yeah. It's how often, it's what's the damage going to be. So the, the ability to help customers recover from ransomware, that resiliency, is table stakes for businesses in any industry these days. Is that the, one of the primary pain points that your customers are coming to you with? It's the number one pain point. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's incredible. I mean, there's not a single briefing that our teams are doing, customer meetings where that term ransomware doesn't come up as, as their number one use case. Uh, just to give you some, a couple of statistics, there's a ransomware attack that happens 11 times a second, yeah. right, around the globe. And this isn't just, you know, minor stuff, right? Uh, I've got friends that are, uh, you know, executives at large company that have been hit, that, have, that some, you know, multi-million dollar ransom 
attack. So our, our play on this is when you think about it, is data protection is the last line of defense. Yes. And so if they break through, it's not a case, Lisa, as you mentioned, it, of if, it's a case of when. Yeah. And so it's going to happen. So one of the most important things is knowing how do you know you have a gold copy, a clean copy, and you can recover at speed. In some cases, we're talking about tens of thousands of systems to do that at speed. That's in our DNA. We've been doing it for many, many years. And we spoke to a lot of the cyber insurance companies on this particular topic as well. And what really came back from that is that they're actually now demanding things like immutable storage, uh, malware detection, air gapping, right? Anomaly detection is sort of core technologies tick the box that they literally won't insure you unless you have those core components. And so what we've done is we've doubled down on that investment. We use AI and ML technologies, particularly around the anomaly detection. One of the, the, the unique and neat, uh, differentiators that Veritas provides is a ransomware resiliency scorecard. Mm. Imagine the ability to say, if you ran a corporation, we can come in and run our analytics on your environment and kind of give you a grade, right? Uh, wouldn't you prefer that than waiting for the event to take place to see where your vulnerability really is? And so these are some of the advantages that we can actually provide for our customers. Nice. It's really, really Just compelling. a final quick question. There is a, a, a common uh, perception, I believe, that ransomware is an on-premise problem. In fact, it is also a cloud <laughs> problem. Is that not right? Oh, absolutely. I, th I think they're the, probably the biggest attack vector is in the cloud. If it's, if it's on-prem, you've certainly got a certain line of defense that's trying to break through. But you know, you're in the open world there, obviously with SaaS applications in the cloud. Uh, it's not a case of if, but when, and it's and it's going to continue to get you know more and more prevalent within corporations. There's always going to be those attack vectors that they find the the flesh wounds that they can attack to break through. What we're concentrating on is that resiliency, that ability for customers to recover at speed. Uh, we've done that with our traditional appliances from our heritage on-prem. We continue to do that with regards to resiliency at speed with our customers in the cloud with partners like AWS, for sure. Almost done. Give me your 30 seconds on AWS and Veritas. We've had uh, a partnership for the better part of 10 years. It's incredible. When you think about AWS where they released the Elastic Compute back in 2006, Right, we've been delivering data protection, data management solutions, Paul, for the better part of 30 years, right? So, so we're, we're juggernauts in our space. Uh, we're the leader in, in data protection, in enterprise data protection. We were on-prem, we continue to be in the cloud, um, as AWS was with the cloud service provider. So the synergies are incredible. About 80 to 85% of our, our joint customers are the same. We take four uh, unique superpowers of AWS, like AWS Outposts and AWS uh, Glacier Instant Retrieval, for example, um, those core technologies and incorporate them into our products as we go to market. And so we released a, a core technology a few months ago. We call it Ultra Recovery Vault. And it's an air-gapped, immutable storage, worm storage, right once, right? You can't change it even when the bad actors try to get in there independent from the customer's tenant in AWS. So we manage it as a managed backup service for our customers. Got it. And so our customers are using that to really help them with their ransomware. So it's been a tre tremendous partnership with That's AWS. Outstanding, 10 years and counting. Last question for you, Rick. You got a billboard on the 101 in Santa Clara right by the fancy Veritas building, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. When there's no traffic. What does that billboard say? What's that bumper sticker about Veritas? I think, I think the billboard would say, welcome to the new Veritas. This is not your grandfather's Oldsmobile. <laughs> We've done a phenomenal job in the, in the last, particularly the last three or four years, to really reinvent ourselves in the cloud. And the investments that we made are really paying off for our customers today. So I'm excited to be part of this journey and excited to talk to you guys today. Love it, not your grandfather's Veritas. Rick, thank you so much for joining Paul and me on okay, the program talking you. about what you guys are doing how you're helping customers really establish that cyber resiliency, which is absolutely critical these days. We appreciate your time. My pleasure, thank you so much. All right, for our guest and Paul Gillen, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, which as you know is the leader in live enterprise and emerging tech coverage.